A vulnerability in the way that Wi-Fi works is that it uses the name or ESSID of the network to determine whether or not you've connected to a network before. Now, if that network didn't have a password, you can get into the situation where your network connection switches without even warning you. You might have experienced this if you've connected to a Starbucks Wi-Fi network and then later walk by another Starbucks and notice that your data cuts out because your phone switches automatically. Now, this would be problematic if a hacker could identify the most recent networks you've connected to. And unfortunately, your device is most likely putting out probe frames which contain exactly that information in plain text. We'll show you how to intercept this information to create a fake network that a device will connect to automatically in this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The way that Wi-Fi works is generally one of two processes to try to establish a connection. In the first, an access point nearby is constantly sending out what are called beacon frames in order to advertise that it's nearby and available to be connected to. In the second, your device will send out what are called probe frames, which include the name of some of the most recent networks you've connected to. Now, this is useful because it's a lot faster than simply waiting for your device to find uh, the beacons that are indicating a network that it's gone, like, connected to before. But this can also be problematic if you do something tricky, like try to create a hidden network that doesn't advertise its ESSID or name. You might think that this is more subtle, but in fact you're making it so every device that you own is constantly sending out probe frames that include the name of your network in plain text. So this actually draws a lot more attention than simply having a normal network and just picking a very strong password. Now, we can take advantage of this by creating a network that has the same name as a network that someone nearby that we've intercepted a probe frame of uh, has connected to before. But the problem is, if it used to be a WPA or even a WEP network that they've connected to, aka it has a password, that means that we're not able to simulate a perfect copy and therefore they won't automatically connect, which is kind of the point of what we're doing here. So we'll need to look around for networks that look like they were probably an open network, such as like a Motel 6 or a Starbucks or something that is known to not need a password. Now a portal is different. If it needs you to sign in, that's actually fine. But if you actually need a password to join the network, then that is not going to work because in this particular attack, unless you had an identical network, the device would not be tricked into connecting automatically. Now to get started, you'll need a copy of Kali Linux, and you'll also need a wireless network adapter that's compatible, like this Panda Wireless PAU07. Once you have those things, you'll need a program called ProbeQuest, which is able to intercept these requests and identify not only the name of the network that the device is attempting to connect to, but also the BSSID of the device that's sending the request. Now this is really helpful because it actually gives us the ability to interpret the manufacturer, which lets us know the difference between an iOS device, a Roku, or a Dell computer just based on the MAC address or the BSSID that's being sent. Now that's very helpful if we want to discriminate between you know, the device we're looking for versus a, a bunch of random printers or other devices nearby. So this is really helpful while trying to use this technique. With all that, you have everything you need. So let's get started. Today, we're going to be exploring a tool to look into probe frames, which will give us more information we can use to do something like create an evil twin network. Now, to get started with this, we can go to the GitHub page and look at the tool as well as determine how new it is, because there are a number of different available tools to look at probe frames out there, and it's important to pick one that's actively maintained if you want it to work. Now you notice here that it was updated only a couple days ago, which means this is a pretty good project for what we're looking for. But you can also check out a project called Probemon, which I have used before and incorporates the ability to also be able to do things like detect the signal strength of devices that are nearby. Now, because it hasn't been updated in two years, it might not be the most reliable, but you can also check this out as well if you're interested in learning more about probe frames. So here we can go ahead and scroll down to the installation instructions. And while we can do a git clone install like we would most tools, we can use a more convenient way of installing it by using pip3. So pip3 is the package manager for Python, 
And if you don't have it, you can make sure to download Python um, by typing uh, apt get install Python. But since we already have it, we can just copy this here and type it into a terminal window in order to get started with the installation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the installation because I already have it, but the advantage of doing it this way is that you can just call probequest by typing it into your terminal window and you don't need to mess around with uh, changing directory into the download and then finding the actual script to run. So we'll go ahead and type probequest tac, tac h and this will give us the help file for probequest and we'll be able to see all the various things that we can do with it. Now we can see here, we can start to filter things, we can remove things, we can do all sorts of more uh, exact searches if we know, for example, the MAC address of stations to exclude or the stations that we want to filter. Now, in order to use this, we will need to put a wireless, uh, wireless network adapter that's compatible with Kali Linux into monitor mode. And to do so, we'll, we'll first need to locate it by typing either IPA or ifconfig. Now here we can see WLAN1 is the name of the network adapter. So we'll put that into monitor mode by typing airmon ng start WLAN1. Once this has been put into monitor mode, we can confirm this by typing ifconfig again. And we can see it is now named WLAN1mon, which means it's been put into monitor mode. Now we can go ahead and type probequest tack i wlan one mon and press return and this should start to uh, listen for various uh, programs that are in the area and display a list that has been parsed to give you a lot of information about what's going on now if you were looking at this in something like wireshark all this information might be a little bit confusing but this program has parsed all the information in a way that makes it clear what device is doing the transmitting and what network is being searched for now, because of the way that Wi-Fi works, just creating a wireless network that has the same name will cause uh, the device listed here to connect to it, provided it is actually identical. Now, if we don't have the password and it's a, it's a network that has a password, we won't be able to do that. But if we wait here for long enough and look through, we should be able to identify a wireless network that doesn't require a password, especially because some older devices will not just request the most recently connected to network, it'll actually hold on to a number of them and request all of them at the same time. Now, something like that can be helpful because not only can we get the uh, network to spoof, we can also start to learn more about the person who owns the device. Now, by taking any network that has a, a very unique name, for example, one that we might not see in other places, uh, either something with a lot of variation in caps or a, a name that's automatically generated that's designed to be different from other devices, like some um, internet service provider uh, routers will automatically generate a hotspot name uh, with a unique number. You can actually go ahead and copy and paste that into something like Wiggle Wi-Fi. Now, if you live in a metropolitan area, something that is pretty common might not be enough to locate the actual GPS location of the wireless network, but you can always restrict things by geolocation so you would get a, a tighter search when you're looking for this sort of information. Now, the value to be gained here is not just the geolocation of the network that you're looking for, it's also in the ability to find out the uh, security of the network that the person might have connected to recently. Now, if you live somewhere rural, you can probably just type in the, uh, the name of the network and the city that you live in. And unless there's a whole lot of wireless networks, you should be able to find out whether or not that particular network has a password. Now, if you really want to get technical, uh, Wiggle Wi-Fi actually has an API that allows you to do this sort of call. So you can get really fancy when it comes to interpreting probe frames and using them in some sort of wireless attack. Now the most straightforward technique to do this would be to just use something like Airgeddon to create a wireless network that has no password and then serve a phishing page to anyone who connects to it. This prevents us from having to trick the user in the first place into switching over to our fake network and even ignoring a warning saying that the network they're joining before had previously been a WEP or WPA network because often the case will be that that network has a password. In this case, we're simply lurking and waiting until we find a network we can confirm does not have a password and popping it up so we can sign up seamlessly, redirect someone onto a network that they don't know they've been redirected to. 
By monitoring probe frames, we can take advantage of the way that Wi-Fi works and trick devices into connecting to any network that we really want. This is useful, but it can also be prevented against by simply going into your computer and deleting any networks in your wireless settings that have been connected to before, especially if they don't have a password. You really don't need these, and while it's convenient, for the extra couple seconds it takes, it's worth making sure that your connection doesn't get hijacked, because this is really easy to do. You can test this yourself by creating a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone that has the same name of a network that you connect to frequently, and observe whether your devices connect or not. This is a great way to make sure that deleting those uh, network names from your wireless history is actually being effective, and that you're not still automatically connecting to those networks at home. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.